to each other. Otherwise, it will not happen. You know, Babajit, I am going to uh, change the uh, change the order of the questions, yeah. uh, which I have written down in my notebook. You have a you have a video called Secret of Ascendance. Okay. And uh, all those who have not watched this video called Secret of Ascendance on Exotic Astrology, you must go and watch this uh, <laughs> video on Secret of Ascendance because that tells you how how you must behave if you are of a particular ascendant. I think it's a very important video which everyone must watch. And now, Babajit, I would like you to, you know, give us give a kind of a gist of this whole, uh, you know, the the placement of an ascendant. If you can tell us about this in a nutshell. Yeah. So, if I would summarize whatever I said in that video and whatever I am yes. planning to speak in the future regarding every ascendant, yeah. I would say, yes. ascendant defines who you are. That's your physical existence. Yes. So that means that first house will tell what will happen to the other houses. <laughs> hmm. So that house is very important. So because hmm. that house will decide the nature of the other houses. So for example, if you have Capricorn in the seventh house, for example, which means you are a cancer ascendant, then it can happen wherever Capricorn is falling, there is some amount of dryness in that. Yes, suppose there is Capricorn in your ninth house, depending on your ascendant then it can happen that there is some amount of dryness in the ninth house. So that uh, that house which is there in your first house, that is very important because that will tell you which are the areas you should focus if you feel headless, goalless, directionless in life. <laughs> which means, suppose if you are an Aries ascendant, yes, so then uh, Mars becomes your ascendant lord. That means... Correct your life situations will demand you irrespective of whatever it is it will mm -hmm. demand that you behave like a capricorn why because mars gets exalted in capricorn yes oh. so that means whatever happens in life you cannot leave that trait of mars in capricorn because then your goal uh, your your goal is proper then you mm -hmm. are channelized properly because the ascendant is you I mean, ascendant is the first house and ascendant lord is you. So where do you function best? Mm. And that you do in the 10th house. Not, not that you, you do good in the 10th house, but for Aries, the sign in the 10th house is Capricorn where Mars gets exalted. Yes. So for you, whenever you focus on doing karmas in life, yes, whenever you, you become action oriented. For Capricorn ascendants, also it is the same because Saturn again gets exalted in the 10th house in Libra. So for these two ascendants, it is very important that they don't focus too much on uh, what is like oh higher power or something. So suppose you are a monk now. Yes, suppose. Then you are either an Aries ascendant or you are a Capricorn ascendant. Now this does not mean that you don't have faith in God. It simply hmm. means that your behavior should be whatever God will give me that is okay. But whatever I am supposed to do, I will always do that. Yes. I will never leave my duty because 10th house is what basically is duty, right? <laughs> Our karma. So we Correct. should have that flavor that we don't, uh, we never uh, go out of that, the 10th house. So similarly, if suppose, you know, whichever ascendant you are, suppose you are a Libra ascendant, then Venus will get, a, and the Libra means what? You, your life situations will demand you that you cannot uh, take one side sometimes. <laughs> Because Libra, you will always have to try to balance. Yes. So even if your fourth house has Capricorn and your seventh house is Aries, it can happen sometimes. <laughs> when you go home, you are balancing your wife and your mother. <laughs> it can happen. Yes. And Cancer is in your tenth house. So that dynamics can come. So whichever ascendant you are, suppose you are a Leo ascendant, then you have to make sure that you always behave like the sun. Yes. Wherever it is, wherever you go, because Wherever you go, ultimately, who is going? The Ascendant Lord is going, right? <laughs> when you are going to marry, who is marrying? The Ascendant Lord, actually. So when you are going to uh, buy property, who is going? You means the Ascendant Lord. So wherever you are going, you, you need to make sure you are very responsible. You are always on time. You have to, be, you have, to have the traits like the sun. So one very simple thing about the Ascendance is we can read the stories of the Vishnu Avatars, which are pertaining to uh, every uh, every planet yes so if somebody wants to know how should a leo ascendant behave <laughs> yes then the answer is very simple you should behave like whom like lord ram <laughs> that's very simple yes 
which means that you should always be responsible you should always be duty bound you should always think of giving light to others because what does a sun do the sun will give light to others right and similarly uh, for uh, if you take uh, cancer ascendant cancer is what it is ruled by the moon so then lord krishna comes into account yes lord krishna's one of the most important things which he had done is giving happiness to others giving pleasure to others yes in fact if you read the bhagavatam you will find that lord krishna when he was in vindavan when the monkeys were there yes who used to uh, play with him he felt that oh these monkeys they had done so much service when i came as lord ram yes <laughs> because they had helped me to cross uh, this lanka and then go and fight fight around and bring sita back so these monkeys had done so much for me i could not reciprocate with them that time yes so then lord krishna he started feeding butter to these monkeys <laughs> even though uh, that was not supposed to be done because that butter which was made uh, which was <clears throat> made from pushpa gandha those specific cows yashoda mai would have yes mm. and those that milk was so fragrant it used to have the smell of rose naturally <laughs> you don't have to add anything and with that milk some specific cows were there there were millions of cows in vidavan with that some specifics used to make milk and then with that you make butter but lord krishna because he felt very bad that oh when i was as ram i could not give anything to uh, the monkeys yes because i couldn't give them much but in this this avatar i will make sure i give them butter at least <laughs> so lord krishna's one of the primary uh, thing is that he always wanted to give happiness to others so if you want to know what every ascendant should be doing is we should always see the life story of uh, the uh, avatars yes so for jupiterian so ascendant uh, uh, for jupiter who's the avatar jupiter is uh, vamandev so vamandev what happened vamandev said that he said to bali maharaj just give me three steps yeah, three yeah. steps yeah. yeah so what does that mean it can happen that if you are an ascendant of Sag sagittarius or pisces it can happen that sometimes life can demand some sacrifice from you yes <laughs> but the most important thing to understand is that what happened to bali maharaj after that bali maharaj see what what's there in the vamandev past time actually bali maharaj was wanting to rule the heavens yes and he was doing the yagyas and if that last yagya would be successful he would become the next indra yes and correct vishnu, vishnu did not want that because then demons would become very powerful but correct but if you go to the uh, shrimad bhagavatam there are 12 mahajans i also have a video <laughs> if you have not watched that you can watch that also no i have mahajans. not okay yeah okay. 12 12 mahajans <laughs> so okay. in that, in that uh, there are name of 12 specific personalities 12 mahajans who are great authorities in scriptural knowledge and ideal behavior and spiritual perfection they are all perfected beings so in that one of them is prahlad and the other is bali maharaj so prahlad is the grandfather of bali maharaj yes for whom lord narsingh dev came and he ripped apart hiranyakashipu mm, 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 mm. and now Correct. this uh, bali is the grandson that means he is supposed to be great like prahlad and he was great because he is also one of the 12 mahajans even though he was fighting yes but internally he always had that consciousness that oh i am vishnu's eternal servant and then what happened he wanted the heavens but then when he lost everything vishnu said that okay now i have taken the with one feet i have marked till the viraja river till satyaloka so that is gone mm -hmm. and with one feet i have mapped i have mapped the earth that is also yes. correct now you are a liar you said you will give me three steps but you gave me yes. only two <laughs> mm. and then bali said no the third step is there that is my correct. my head. head is there so please yes. put the third step over my head and then bali then mamande was so happy yes and then what happened people know till here but people don't know what happened later <laughs> then later what happened if you read bhagavatam it is said that bali maharaj became the ruler of sutala yeah. sutala is the underwater heavenly planet oh. yes. yes it has they they are known as bila swargas bila swarga means those which are below the earthly the bhuloka the bhuloka is the seventh planetary system 
above this there are six and below there are again seven so sutala is below the planetary realm of huloka which is more 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 and millions of times more opulent than the heavens where indra resides so what is the lesson in this the lesson is that whenever your guru asks you to sacrifice something the end result is millions of times more so you never lose anything by giving things to your guru or to god specially yes you will gain multi million times more trillions and billions of times more and that's not it later on what happened vaman dev said i will personally become your doorkeeper yes and then he was going to sutal and he was guarding that place so that no other demon could attack and even demigods can't do anything because vishnu is simply standing there so when you give something to god god gives himself to you should i repeat when you give something to god god will give himself to you and this is very true in lord krishna's case also lord krishna once there was a fruit seller who came that fruit seller uh saw that krishna is so beautiful so mesmerizing and then this fruit seller was uh, giving the fruits to krishna but she was not counting because she was lost in his beautiful form and then mm-hmm. when lord krishna asked how what do you want in return how much money do you want then he this lady said i don't want anything i have seen you that's it <laughs> and then this lady goes back to her home and when she goes back to her home what she sees the basket which she brought fruits which is now empty because she gave everything to krishna and she did not take anything was filled with gold lapis lazuli diamonds emeralds rubies so many things my god so she could have got some na uh, some pennies from somebody but now she became a millionaire <laughs> so the lesson is whenever god or your guru asks you to sacrifice something that is for your good and the end result is like you can't imagine so that's what vamantev displays and for saturn kurma is the avatar so it means that you have to be very much duty focused very much duty bound you have to learn to have patience because kurma who was kurma basically kurma was the tortoise above tortoise. whom that samudra manthan was going on yes that mountain was uh, become it does that the tortoise was having the responsibility for that stability yes so, it was the base for the mountain which was yes. being yeah yeah so that means if you are a ruler of uh, uh, ascendant which is like saturn for example then you have to be very careful that we uh, we have to understand that we uh, life will demand patience from us yes life will demand things that uh, need need us to be tolerant we have to be humble humility is very important yes and saturn plays a very important role here and the last thing i would say is uh about this digbala of saturn here this is linked actually so now okay. uh which house the uh, which uh, house does saturn gets directional strength we all know it's the seventh house yes but uh the funny thing is seventh house is the house of desire sex and romance and all this <laughs> marriage what is the planet of old age doing there has somebody thought about this saturn is all, what saturn is all about old age suffering tears Hmm. why why does it gets directional strength there because if you see seventh house is the only house which is surrounded by two dusthanas <laughs> yes there's no other house where either side there is dusthanas yes which means seventh house is a house where you once enter either you go back there is problem or you go ahead there is problem <laughs> if you go ahead you see the eighth house so now what's that Seventh house is marriage. Suppose you take marriage, then if you go back, which means you have some fights, then you get divorced. Then that's a problem. Suppose you don't get divorced, you have a very happy married life. Then what happens? Oh, you go to the eighth house. Eighth house is what? Eighth house is the house of attachment, asakti. Then what happens? Oh, you can't stay without that person, right? <laughs> you get attached so much. So that is why Saturn is very happy in the seventh house, <laughs> because Saturn, Saturn sees Saturn's duty is to give you tears and suffering by the lessons. Yes. So when Saturn is in the seventh house, it can happen that people have too many desires because then Saturn can make you cry as much as he wants to give you the lessons. Of course, that you should not have so much desires. <laughs> and Ramayana also explains this. 
like many people will run after beauty right oh my girl should be very beautiful my husband should be very beautiful the ramayan has a hidden lesson lesson in that which people don't know that we should not uh, run too much after beauty because the problem was sita was too beautiful and ram was too handsome <laughs> the problem started with lord ram it was not sita the problem did not start with ravan the problem started when surpnakha got attracted to ram why because he was too handsome <laughs> mm. in scriptures also it is said that rupavati uh, bharya satru which means that if your uh, if your spouse is too beautiful it will cause you troubles because all other members of the opposite sex will have a eye on them and your whole life will go in fighting and quarreling <laughs> so we need to understand that we do not get too much obsessed with um, things of this material world which will anyways fade away after some time so baba ji if you have mars as the ascendant then which is the avatar of vishnu what what if you have mars yeah see some yeah, you said ram mars for yeah, mars yeah for mars it is uh, lord narsing dev i guess so what narsing dev did narsing dev narsing dev is not a ordinary incarnation like ram or krishna or something like that because narsing dev was specifically because uh this demon hiranyakashyap he had asked so many boons from brahma that oh i want uh, that uh, this uh, i will not be killed inside outside not yeah. not be killed with a weapon uh, or with any astra shastra yes i will not be killed by he. this fellow asked brahma that i will not be killed by anybody who is created out of you <laughs> my god that's, that's like right. almost immortality only <laughs> and then nursing dev appeared to protect pralad maharaj yes because he was that five year old boy and pralad is also one of the 12 mahajans so okay. for martian ascendants it is very important that they always keep uh, hearing the story of nursing dev and they also should give try to give protection to others because what does a soldier do soldier always mm. gives protection now mm. it doesn't mean that oh your ascendant is mars then you have to behave like nursing dev whoever is there you go and rip them apart it's not like that <laughs> but uh, you have to understand the basic principle of the story that uh, you can uh, you you need to understand what those stories are na? and then according but anyways i'll be making video on the avatars next week so uh, venus venus Venus, Venus, who's the deity? Venus is Parshuram, I guess. Parshuram and Mercury. Mercury, uh, Mercury. I am not able to recall who is it, but I'll make the video anyway. So then maybe you can have a look at that. So these are the avatars, and they are also linked with the ascendants. Yes. So and yes. that is that is that is very important that we learn these stories and the avatars. Yes, and for Mercury, it is Buddha, I guess. If, if i if if i am right in my limited fund of intelligence so what does buddha signify buddha signified enlightenment yes so that's what we should that's how we should behave when we uh, are having prominent planets in mercurial signs we should be very calm and when we take decisions we have to be calm and composed because we cannot behave hastily <laughs> otherwise things will get very uh, get very difficult for us because people make blunders when they do some decision sometimes so we need to be very care- careful that we do our meditation properly if we are a mercurial ascendant that is very important for them so baba ji my next question is uh, something that you don't have to answer uh, the question is that do you have a planet, prominent planet in hasta nakshatra you don't have to answer that oh hasta no no i don't <laughs> <laughs> you don't <laughs> okay i wish uh, i have. <laughs> okay. so baba ji uh, moving on yes you see my problem with astrology is if i look at a chart of a future mahatma gandhi of a future einstein of a future nobel prize winner it is very difficult to say that this person will be the prime minister president nobel prize winner or a person of very high achievements yes so what is that you know that you can use to identify a very of course all charts are high caliber you see everyone has achievements in some area or the other yes but, yeah. so that is always there but some people uh, not only have the caliber and the talent but they also kind of achieve a very high status in life 
and and they are able to make decisions which actually change the world changes the world yes. so what is that can be used to identify such charts what kind of placements do you uh, do you look for yeah so uh, this question uh, actually uh, can have different answers and the answers will vary as per the experience of the astrologer and uh, there are no specific rules in the classics which says that, i mean there are yogas raj yogas 